I'm Julian Deal. I'm here at the 2012 Kalamazoo Medieval Studies meeting, and I am talking to the editors of Brill's new companion to Boethius in the Middle Ages. They are on your left, Philip Phillips of Middle Tennessee State University, and on your right, Harold Kaler at Troy University. I had a number of questions for you. Um, I was interested now that the book has appeared, what have been the catalysts to the modern interest in medieval, medieval Boethius? And what was the role of the International Boethius Society in effecting this? Well, let me uh, begin by addressing the first half of the question. That uh, one of the catalysts of uh, propelling interest in Boethian studies always has been the fact that Geoffrey Chaucer translated and everyone who studies the Troilus, for example, must read Boethius. Uh, in France, uh, Jean Dumas translated uh, Boethius, uh, and it's very influential in the Homo de la Rose, and for that reason, it has propelled Boethian studies in France. And I think basically, in a nutshell, uh, that has been the case, except for the philosophers and uh, students of medieval history who uh, have other reasons for studying Boethius. Right. And the role of the International Boethius Society? Well, the International Boethius Society, since its inception now over 20 years ago, has been to promote the study of uh, Boethius, his life and his works and influence. And the, the International Boethius Society um, publishes a journal Carmina Philosophiae, uh, which contains articles on different aspects of Boethius, and also includes edited editions of manuscripts. Okay. Um, now, we began discussions about a companion to the medieval Boethian tradition at the Kalamazoo Conference, I think, in 2004, and it's taken us just under eight years to complete the book and bring it out. What were the problems and issues you encountered along the way? Well, uh, that's, uh, uh, instead of uh, sending forth a call for papers to put into a collection of essays that are not necessarily related in any way to each other other than the fact that they cover one subject, uh, we sought out scholars who are eminent in their uh, areas studies uh, in an attempt to get comprehensive coverage, the quadrivial issues, the uh, trivial issues, as well as the consolatio. Uh, and then instead of saying write an article, we requested that they write an article on a particular element within the full coverage of the book. Problems along the way? Problems. Do we need to discuss them? Or I'd be curious, though. Problems along the way. Well, um, that, by the way, was a problem finding the scholars. Okay, <laughs> find, finding the finding the team of scholars and um, um, making sure that all of the contributions were uh, uniform in nature, that all of them contributed to the uh, to the whole project. Also, making sure that we um, were able to pull together a, um, a bibliography that was comprehensive in nature. So instead of looking at one aspect of Boethius, looking at the constellation of philosophy, you know, we treated the corpus of Boethius. So. Yeah, I've heard you describe the bibliography and the index to the, the volume as research tools in their own right. Yes, <laughs> and they are. They um, are. The book's there. Where do you see Boethian studies going in the, in, in, in the future? Uh, we're hoping that because this is comprehensive uh, and it does take into account the four quadrivial areas of Boethian interest that more uh, studies in mathematics, geometry, astronomy, and music uh, will lead to uh, a more comprehensive understanding even of the consolatio. That's one area. Uh, another is uh, modern physics 
has opened up the field of cosmological studies, which in itself has a history, and within that history, belief is very important. I see more work to be done in that area. You see the book, therefore, as having a definite impact on, on, this, on this future. On the future, uh, in both directions, as I see it. It's one of the real strengths of the book. We think that uh, we, we, give, we give very serious attention to Boethius' uh, quadrivial works in a way that hasn't been done heretofore. Also, in respect to the future of Boethian studies, uh, just, as, um, just as Boethius's constellation was translated into Old English, Middle English, and, and so forth, there, there's an ongoing need for translations, uh, identifying, identifying the translations and discussing the translations of Boethius's works. And that's, that's one, of, one of the larger goals of the International Boethius Society, and that forms a a serious part of our ongoing research. Now, the book's just out. Um, information about it, acquiring it will be attached to this, uh, this, uh, this video. Um, I thank you both for coming and talking to me, and we're going to be celebrating the, the book at the, at the reception of the, uh, the book's launch at the reception of the International Boethia Society this evening, and I look forward to that too. Thank yes. you both. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.